Oh. Oh, Jesus. G'day guys and gal. I'll be the first one to admit, I don't really like Angron. I even gave him the title, The Walking Abortion. He was despised by his sons, failed to conquer his home planet, and lacked a deeper thought process or a level of self-awareness that even the most deprived of his brothers had. As such, I labelled him as a bad character, and the worst of the Primarchs. And whilst I do still stand by that, in my brutalising of him, I ignored the shining gem amongst the feces, the tale of the tragedy of Angron. See, while I do give Angron a lot of smack, much of it I've come to realise is just straight up not his fault, and despite his very grim situation, there are moments of lucidity where we get to see the honourable courageous man that Angron was supposed to be. After all, his designated purpose was an empath, a moral anchor for the Primarchs, yet he ended up as their most vicious berserker, not even doing that particularly well as that wasn't his natural role. Before we get started, do you like sci-fi RTS with huge battles, unrestricted base building, and big boy mechs? The answer is obviously yes, those things are awesome. So today's your lucky day, as Crossfire Legion has all those features and more. Drawing inspiration from all the classic beloved RTSs from our childhood, combined with their own original flair. Crossfire Legion doesn't believe in pay to win. With 51 different units and a variety of special abilities that you can deploy, all of which are unlocked through gameplay. With this many options, there are countless strategies to employ to get the W. You want to zerg rush the enemy lines with an army of ninja samurai robots? No worries. You want to smash through their front lines with a titan legion? Easy as. You want to build so many turrets that the enemy fears even looking at your base? Done deal. Set in the universe of Crossfire, a franchise with 1 billion players worldwide, Crossfire Legion isn't just restricted to the classic yet very awesome traditional versus mode. There is also a payload mode, where you gotta push the truck into the enemy base, a co-op mode, where you try to survive waves of enemy AI attacks, as well as multiple single player modes, such as a fully voice acted campaign with multiple cinematics and 15 narrative driven missions. So whether you're a casual player wanting to sit back and enjoy the fireworks, or a sweaty nerd who wants to climb the ladder, and even compete in upcoming esports events, Crossfire Legion has something for everyone. Cheers to Crossfire Legion for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over the tragedy of Angron, pinpointing the key highlights in his life that show how hard he actually had it. This won't just be like a lore retelling of Angron, more so a snapshot of why he's actually a good character despite his many faults. Let's get into it. From day one, Angron had it harder than a hooker with a torn asshole. When he landed on the shitty backwater planet of Nikiria, he was instantly beset upon by an Eldar ambush. Even in his infant form, he was a mighty warrior, killing the Eldar but suffering massive wounds in the process. It's believed those Eldar were sent by a Farseer who foresaw that Angron would become a galactic menace, hence they sought to kill him before he could cause too much harm. Ironically, Angron being wounded allowed the slave masters of Nukria to easily kidnap him and enslave him as a gladiator. They also saw his fighting potential, hence they chose to enslave him rather than adopt him like so many of his Primarch brothers were. If the Elder had not attacked him, Angron would have either been able to fight his way through the slavers or been seen as special enough for adoption. Once again, the Elder fucked themselves over by trying to manipulate fate. In the arena, Angron wasn't this bloodthirsty monster. He hated it, being forced to kill to survive in his first ever bout. With his rapidly growing body, impressive Primarch aura and power, he was sold to a gladiator house that then transferred him to the most popular arena on the planet. He was then forced to fight other gladiators, always winning because you know he was a literal fucking demigod and the other gladiators were just dudes. Even with how much he had suffered, been fighting since he was literally a toddler, he still had a strict code of honour, sparing those who fought well and never relishing the kills or letting his opponents suffer. Angron would try to escape on numerous occasions, but he just wasn't built for it. He hadn't grown to the full size and power yet, so he couldn't just bust his way out. He had absolutely no stealth powers like Corvus or Psycho powers like Magnus. He didn't have the charisma of Horus or Lorga, nor the brilliance of Perturabo. He was just very ill-suited to his own situation. His tragedy approaches the first of its many crescendos, with the fact that he had an adoptive gladiator father called Oenomas, that is just not how it's pronounced but bear with me, an honourable man who helped shape Angron and encouraged his growth into the hero he was born to be. It was around this time that Angron also discovered one of his Primarch powers, a power that would later be stolen from him. He was able to take away the suffering of others, as he did with his gladiator brethren, so that they may rest peacefully. It's likely he had a whole plethora of abilities that he would never uncover like this, 
After all, there was no healer Primark, a role that you would think would be fulfilled, so it's likely Angren was supposed to be this tanky support, rather than the hardcore DPS we all know and don't really love. When Angron and his daddy won a legendary match against Berserker Ogren with the Butcher's Nails implanted in them, the Slave Masters told them to fight to the death. Angron was like, yeah nah, how about you lick my clit? This probably wasn't the best answer as the Masters sedated Angron and then implanted the Butcher's Nails within him. This completely fucked up Angron's life. The Butcher's Nails were complicated devices that selectively pricked a human's brain to bring out aggression and award them for violence, whilst deadening their other emotions. It was basically known for turning warriors into berserkers. However, it wasn't a crude basic piece of shit. Those with nails could live a full life. The issue with Angron, however, was that his brain wasn't human. It was significantly more complex. As such, when the Slave Masters tried to implant it, it wasn't compatible and it didn't fit. So, they made it fit, removing parts of his brain and inserting it in a much cruder and crueler fashion. When Angron awoke, he was in a blind frenzy and he killed his father. When he came to his senses, he had not only lost his mentor, but also his Primark abilities. The nails had literally taken away his special Primark source from him, leaving him with a fuck off massive headache. Angron would go on to escape and lead a rebellion, pretty much cosplaying as Spartacus. However, his brain was so fried from the nails that he wasn't able to coordinate a proper rebellion, and he soon found himself outnumbered, outgunned, and about to be slaughtered. This is where the Emperor finds him and contributes to the tragedy. The Emperor was like, alright buddy, let's go, and Angron is like, can we save my gladiator brothers and sisters and take them with us? And the Emperor is like, uh, no, fuck you. And Angron is like, but why? And the Big E is like, because I said so. Angron then refuses the Emperor's offer and he chooses to fight and die with his army. The Emperor, in his infinite wisdom, then kidnaps Angron, leaving his army leaderless to be slaughtered. This was pretty shitty by the Big E, and it pretty much guaranteed Angron would resent him for life. Like, when Angron came aboard, he tried to kill the Emperor and even killed a Custodes before the Emperor knocked him out. He was then given the World Eaters, but he didn't want to replace his dead gladiator family, even if the replacement was bigger and shinier. He just wanted to die on the plains of Nicrea. So for Angron, he was already dead inside, which goes on to justify a lot of his future actions. He didn't care about anything, and he was in constant pain from the nails. No wonder why he was a fucking prick. Eventually, through the bravery of Khan, Angron leads his legion as they tear a path across the galaxy. Now whilst Angron was dead inside and treated everyone like shit, there was still a part of him, the noble courageous warrior, that wanted to live and thrive. He fought an internal battle between giving up and overcoming his situation. To compound this battle, Angron was actually dying. The nails were tearing his brain apart, even as his Primark regeneration was stitching it back together. So over the course of the Great Crusade, he slipped deeper and deeper into insanity. One of his infamously shit calls was getting the Butcher's Nails remade and compatible for a starter use. This might seem unforgivable and unjustifiable, but when you remember that Angron was trying to overcome his inner deadness and live again, it actually begins to make sense. After all, his gladiator brothers and sisters all had the Butcher's Nails, so if his sons had them as well, it should make them closer and bring Angron back to the memory of his glory days. Obviously, this did not work. If your dog dies, you can't just colour in your cat to look like your dog and bam, all fixed but it was Angron's attempt at trying to live again, despite how misguided it was. Most of Angron's sons hated him, and you can't blame them. He asked too much of them, expecting, almost hoping that they would fail, so that he could justify his own resentment towards them. He could claim that his gladiator brothers and sisters were more worthy, despite the fact that the challenges he gave to his World Eater sons were rigged from the start. He would punish them, order decimations, and pitch them against each other. To make this worse for Angron, his deteriorated brain removed removed his Primark aura and connection to the warp, meaning that his sons barely felt that overwhelming loyalty that the other legions felt towards their own gene fathers. Here is an example of just how much the World Eaters hated Angron. When he tried to decimate them again, they knocked him out. There was then a rebellion against the Butcher's Nails and Angron that was violently put down. Despite that rebellion being put down, and despite the World Eaters now all having the nails and being berserkers, they had the highest share of Astartes who remained loyalists when the heresy broke out. 
Let that sink in. Not only does it show how much they despise their father, but it also shows what the Legion could have been. Paragons of loyalty and honor, being used by the Emperor as anchors for the other Legions. The fact that so many remain loyal despite their father twisting the Legion's spirit and giving them all anger management issues is just such a massive testament to them. Angron's tragedy would continue as he chooses to side with Horus against the Emperor. He doesn't do this because he believes in Horus or the cause. He doesn't even necessarily do it because he hates the Emperor. It's because nothing he has tried has fixed the deadness inside of him, and going scorch earth in a galaxy-wide civil war might just give him the glorious death he has been seeking. Whilst he wouldn't get that, he would gain something else entirely unexpected. The power of friendship. Angron and Lorga teamed up and tore a bloody asshole across Ultramar. During this time, they struck an unlikely friendship. Lorga saw the hidden glorious warlord within Angron, whilst Angron appreciated Lorga's brotherhood, despite his funny way of showing it. When Angron was buried in debris during a battle, Lorga frantically dug him out. As he was digging, he wasn't focused on the battle and he got hit with a Warhound Titan's plasma cannon. As he lay dying, the Warhound went to step on him to crush him. Angron runs in and stops the leg, cracking every bone, splitting every ligament, and definitely popping the mother of all hemorrhoids, all to save Lorga's life. Lorga in turn would try coax the real Angron out, speaking to him of lessons and parts of his life. For example, when Lehman and Angron fought, Lehman technically won as he baited Angron into a kill zone to teach him a lesson. However, Angron wouldn't accept the lesson and he believed himself to be the victor, as more Space Wolves died than World Eaters. Lorga tries to show Angron the folly of that thought process. If Angron could understand that, then he would show that he still had access to higher thinking. But this video is the tragedy of Angron, not the wholesome redemption arc of Angron because, you know, that doesn't exist. So when Angron and Lorga were fighting against Gilliman on Nukiria, Angron had a full meltdown as the last of his brain was blended away. He began to hallucinate that he was fighting side by side with his old gladiators, even recovering their bones and wearing it on his armor so that they could taste battle once again. He was enraged to discover that the entire planet thought he was a coward for abandoning his warriors, despite it not being his fault, like he literally killed everyone on the planet. Then he had his final hemorrhage and begun to die. He was ready for this death. It was like a second chance. He was on Nukiria, surrounded by battle and his gladiator brothers and sisters. It was almost perfect. But Lorga would not let Angron rest. As Angron was dying, Lorga invoked a ritual to turn Angron into a demon prince. The last remaining World Eater Psychers try to stop Lorga from damning their father, but the ritual was complete. Angron's first actions as a demon prince was to kill those Psychers that had just tried to save his soul. He was no longer dying, but the nails, the pain, the anger, it all followed him with his ascension and it burned hotter than ever before. The internal battle he had been fighting since the day the Emperor kidnapped him was finally lost. The last of his character was crushed, and all that remained was a one-dimensional big-ass angry demon, a literal wrecking ball with no redeeming qualities. His brotherhood with Lorga evaporated, his traitor brothers beat him into submission so that they could use him as a Pokemon tier weapon. His scant few appearances since have ended in banishment and humiliation. The tragedy of Angron was complete. Time and time again he just wanted to fucking die, yet each time death was stolen from him and his life was ruined even further. I see now that nothing he really did was his own fault. He beat those Elder as a baby, awesome. He refused to kill his father and tried to escape the slavers at every opportunity, awesome. He led a rebellion and escaped the slavers, awesome. He literally tried to kill the Emperor for completely fucking him over and leaving his family to die. Awesome. His rage and resentment, compounded by nails in his fucking brain, was totally justified. Any one of us would have followed a similar path. Everyone he got close to either died or betrayed him, leading to an eternity of suffering. Such is the tragedy of Angron the Red Angel. Even his nickname is a tragic parody of Sanguinius. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. We're only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of smexy lexi art. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more tragic content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.